Okay, now for the actual SD-WAN implementation or traffic optimization, we are going to go to network. Actually, what we will try to mimic here is that, uh, uh, like I said in the start, that this link, the bottom one, will be ISP1 for both sides and the upper one will be ISP2 or the expensive link. The bottom one will be the lower link. The parameters that I'm going to set is that uh, latency between the two points should be uh, less than 10 milliseconds. Jitter should be less than 10 milliseconds and the packet drop uh, ideally it should be zero but since it's, this, is, this is the simulation or you can say emulation sometimes packet drops happen and then our results may not uh, uh, look like what we would expect them to be. So the packet loss I would set it as 2%. You can test the same environment uh, at your end and uh, maybe change the values. So come on to fire 40 gate and go to this performance SLA. Once here, these are the default profiles already available. Uh, like this one is for Amazon. This one is for 40 gate, uh, Google, but for, we are going to create our own. So click on create new. And uh, let's say we call it, uh, maybe we call it voice profile or uh, let's, let's go with voice. Like it is, uh, uh, you can say that uh, latency sensitive traffic. The server IP that I'm going to try, since I'm on 40 gate 2, I'm going to try to reach the loopback IP address of 40 gate 1. And all SD-WAN interfaces will participate in that, which we know that two interfaces we had selected earlier, as uh, ISP1 and ISP2, and enable probe packets. Basically, this enable probe packets is the key component. What it does is that it sends the ICMP, or you can say ping packets, uh, to the other end, to this server. And based on the reply, it will calculate that how much time it took. If it took more time, uh, the more time than the SLA that we are setting in here, like 10 milliseconds, then it will consider the link, the primary link, uh, as not suitable. So these are the values that I had mentioned earlier, that 10, 10, 10. This is the threshold. This is the jitter value. This is the packet loss. And this is actually the link state that it will be checking on the physical link, like twice every second. And if it fails for continuously five times, it will, it will consider the link as down. And that's it. So let's create this one. And you see that uh, we have got uh, two uh, interfaces connected in here. Now the next part I'm going to do is come to SD-WAN rules. And uh, this is the default rule. I'm going to create my new one. Call this rule as let's say voice. You can call this anything. The source address I'm going to use is again, you can uh, very granularly, uh, you can say that uh, mark the traffic that what kind of traffic uh, should be uh, used to shift over to the other link and not the other kind of traffic. Like if you have a lot of traffic, voice, video, your office communication, emails or internet traffic, you would not, you may not want all that traffic to be shifted to your high cost link or more expensive link. You would only require which is uh, require that kind of traffic to be shifted, which is like ultra critical, like maybe voice communication or maybe some other your database applications, which are quite delay sensitive. So that uh, you can um, granularly define here. But since this demonstration purposes, I'm going to uh, mark all traffic to be eligible for this rule. Similarly, destination is all. And uh, the, the criteria that we are going to use to, to, to uh, select the interface, outgoing interface is the SLA. SLA that we had defined earlier, which was by the name of voice. And the interfaces that we are going to select is ISP1, which is like you can say first preference for going out, which we saw that it was uh, a bit less costly interface. And the second interface, in case this one does not meet the criteria, is ISP2. So once that part is done, you can see that we are experiencing packet loss because of the immediate environment. Anyways, let's give it some time. It will be OK. And click OK. So we have these two interfaces here and they are part of this VLAN. Ideally, it should be uh, showing here 
the preferred interface at the moment it is not showing but it will eventually show that the upper interface which is ISP1 because we have selected that in the configuration it should be selected as the preferred interface. So similar configuration I'm gonna do on FortiGate 1 as well and once that is completed I will come back here and I will show you. Okay, so configuration on uh, FortiGate 1 appliance has been completed. Uh, likewise, I created performance SLA and uh, I bound that SLA in sd WAN roles and uh, this is what we get. And you can see over here that at the moment, this shows that this tick mark shows that the member which is preferred at the moment is uh, port uh, 2 or ISP1. And if we come over here as well on FortiGate 2, we can see that this one is also preferring ISP1 as its outgoing route. Um, uh, let me show you one more thing. If we come down here and click on this, we can see that this is the real-time packet uh, which are which, which it is showing as the latency or or uh, any problem. At the moment, there is no problem. Both the links are working fine for uh, both 40 gates firewalls. And let me also show you one interesting thing. If I try to capture packets on this interface using Wireshark. It will show you the ping packets going back and forth uh, between the two appliances like uh, this one is going from uh, from both the FortiGate firewall to the to the loopback IP addresses of the other FortiGate and based on these responses uh, it will be able to measure the round trip time. If it falls within the SLA that we have defined it's okay if it does not it will mark the other link as to be eligible if, if that link is suitable. So right now like I said that it's working fine there is no issue latency like you can see on both the on both the interfaces is well within the parameters that we have set. Now the key component like I said in the lab was this bridge device. What we are going to do is that let's say like I said that this one is using at the ISP1 link the bottom one. Let's induce a latency here. Let's see how we can do that. So open up my bridge device, this one. And the command that uh, will do what we want to do is this one. You can copy it or you can read about it as well. Uh, this TC is traffic controller. QDISC is basically queuing discipline. The device that we want to implement is here. Uh, I need to type in Ethernet 0, not Ethernet 2. And uh, this is network emulation route is like at the root of the device basically you just go ahead with this and the delay this is the parameter that we want to induce at the moment there is nothing in the queuing like whatever packet this kernel is receiving it is forwarding it to the required interface but now after this introduction of delay of 100 millisecond with a variation of 10 millisecond and 25 percent this is like comparison of the like if you want to do a variation how much variation it will it will do compared to the last one. So this is 25% of that. So if I do that, let me let me do one more thing. Let me go to Alpine 1 and let's do a continuous ping to 30.1.1.1.2. So this LAN segment on the left is pinging the LAN segment on the right and everything is working fine. We are using the low cost ISP link. Now, if there is a delay, we would see that the traffic will start to experience the delay that, that we are going to emulate, right? So let's see how if this works or not. I am on bridge one and I have set this command to introduce a delay of 100 milliseconds. Once that happens, FortiGate will start to realize that the network is not meeting the required uh, SLA parameters and it will shift the traffic to the other link and we'll see. So press enter and quickly jump to Alpine one, okay? So enter and Alpine 1 and you can see that the uh, delay has increased to 105 like above almost 100 like the variation that we set and again it has come down to 1. Why? Because uh, the traffic has shifted to the other link and to verify that let's go to FortiGate here and let's go to SD-WAN rules. Earlier you remember that this FortiGate device was preferring ISP1 look now it is preferring ISP2 and if we come to FortiGate2 and go to SD-WAN rules this one is also preferring ISP2 
So this is uh, this is the proof of concept that FortiGate does implement very intelligent uh, traffic handling as compared to the traditional routing protocols. Now, if your link comes back up, let's say your traffic gets uh, your 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 network conditions improve. Uh, so ideally, you should not be using your uh, uh, costly link anymore, right? So to do that, let's try this thing. Let's try to remove this one. This entry. Let's remove this. Delete. And now uh, FortiGates will keep on checking the interfaces. Once the interface it realizes that uh, it the, the, the parameters have fallen back to the ideal conditions within the SLA, will she see that this uh, preferred interface will move back to ISP1. Actually, this does not uh, refresh on its own, so we need to refresh it manually. So this is FortiGate 2 and we see that it has selected as ISP1 as the preferred link. Similarly for FortiGate 1, let's refresh this one as well. And uh, it, indeed it has also selected port 2 or ISP1 as the preferred interface. So this was the demonstration of uh, FortiGate implementation of uh, they call SD-WAN. I wouldn't actually call it SD-WAN but this is definitely very intelligent traffic handling and very cool implementation of the concept. If uh, we have a centralized controller and all these policies are implemented in there, then that would be the true SD-WAN. So that's all for this video. Uh, I hope you liked uh, this demonstration uh, and I would really like to thank you for viewing.